Newton Crouch Incorporated presents technical tips how to install conveyor chain. Installing bed chain or removing slack are two common maintenance events. If you are replacing your conveyor, the first step is to order the correct size, type, and length of chain. When ordering your bed chain for a unit, always know the type of chain and rollers that you have in the unit for they do not cross over. A straight pin is different than a heavy duty and so for a clinch pin. The straight pin cogs will pull here, here, and here. The heavy duty chain will pull here, here, and here. The clinch pin chain will start out pulling here, here, and here. They are not interchangeable. Know your serial number when you call our parts department. The serial number gives us as-built information. NCI parts department will send you the correct length and type of chain you need as well as the splice pins to complete the job. Your first step is to clean your spreader. You cannot pull in new chain or remove slack from current chain if there is product in your hopper. Next, put a piece of tubing or wood under the full length of the spreader hopper on the cross members. This support will allow you to pull the chain more easily and take out more slack. Conveyor chain is heavy. 16 inch chain weighs about 5 pounds per foot. 24 inch chain weighs about 7 pounds per foot. During the installation of your bed chain, you need to try to place a 2 by 4 on the edge or 2 by 3 tubing up under your chain to help get your chain up. In return, that allows you to pull as much slack out of the chain as possible so that upon initial startup and running of your spreader, that you won't have to readjust your chain quite as soon as what you would if you was to leave the slack into the chain. Now a critical step in your installation. Make sure your chain orientation is correct. It has been our experience that if something can be installed backwards or upside down, it will be. The sprocket teeth must pull against the pin, not the chain link. Listen closely as our shop manager explains chain orientation. When installing your bed chain, be careful to note the orientation of your pins. Your sprocket cogs must always pull against the pin and not the back surface of the chain. When installing your bed chain, always note the orientation of your sprocket cogs against the chain. This is incorrect. Your cogs should never pull against the back edge of the chain. Consequences of backwards chain can be bowing of chain, chain jumping off sprocket teeth, and incorrect spread rate. With correct chain orientation, pull the chain starting at the rear of the spreader at the dishes. Feed the chain across the support and cross members to the front of the spreader. You may need to untie the rope to get the chain through the slot. Wrap the chain around the front roller and feed it into the hopper. Once the chain is through the slot of the hopper and the floor, tie a rope or pull onto the edge of the chain. Using the rope, pull the chain through the body to the rear of the spreader. Pull the chain as tight as you can. You want to remove as much slack as possible. That'll allow him to pull one more, or actually two more inches of chain out of this bed chain. Conveyor chain will stretch during the first few loads of product. The conveyor can have slack under the hopper, but must not drag across the cross members. Now the chain is pulled tight, mark the excess, cut the pin, and remove the excess links.
Simply thread the splice pin through the links for straight pin or clenched pin chain. Reinforced heavy duty chain installation requires matching the edge links. They play one this way and they all have a certain spot. So this one will be your first one because it's the shortest one on it. And then you'll go down here, pull it all the way out, put it on top, come back up here. The nut. <laughs> yeah. Very small, very hard to, or very easy to lose. The first couple of links are always the most difficult to get your rod threaded. In this case, we're actually tapping the end of the rod to get it to feed through. Screw the nut onto the end of the splice pin. Your pipe grip and the pin that you just put in, just clamp it down so that whenever you're spinning the nut, it won't make the whole rod spin. Uh, I usually get it where it won't turn and then I back it off about a quarter of a turn. So it doesn't seize this uh, whole thing right here. So I just get it as high as it'll go, as far as my hand will get it. So it's getting pressure. And I just leave it right there. And once you're done, you cut this off and you tack it with your welder. So the, the nut can't spin off. We hope this video has answered your questions. There are several ways to get technical assistance. First, your operator's manual was made just for your unit. Keep it on hand and refer to it. Second, our website has a wealth of information available to you 24-7. Please visit us at www.newtoncrouch.com and go to the menus Support and Technical Support. Information is divided into dry, liquid, and precision. Third, visit the Newton Crouch YouTube channel. We are adding new videos regularly. Lastly, 
We are always glad to speak with you between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. When you call us at 800-241-1350, a person will answer your call. No automated menus. Proudly made in America, a family-owned business since 1940, Newton Crouch, Inc.